I hope you enjoyed that video. It came all the way from Kenya. You know, last week we checked out a video from Uganda. So a video pick, let's just say we're touring Africa a bit. And uh, that one was Double Double. I love that song so much. It's time for our This Is My Story segment. And this time around, we had the opportunity to hang out with Pastor Helen Yorson herself. Uh, let's check out her story. Hi, my name is Pastor Helen Yorson, and this is my story. One, two, one, two, three, hey. um, I was born in London, England. My parents are Nigerian, and I'm married to a Ghanaian. So my nationalities are three nationalities, <laughs> multinational. I'm a mother of two. I'm married to Pastor Andy Orson of KICC Ghana and I have two wonderful girls. I'm a singer, a vocal coach, pastor, worship leader. Most of all, I'm a believer in Christ. I love the Lord with all my heart. Well, actually, um, I've been singing from a very young age. This is before I became a Christian. While I was in primary school, I was acting. In my um, secondary school, I was singing, acting. I think I was my chapel prefect. In, actually, in secondary school, I was the chapel prefect. So I used to organize the choirs and um, organize some of our plays, end of year plays. So I've been singing for like, I can't remember actually, it's been since I was quite young. When it comes to leading worship, I've been leading worship for over 20 years. In the name of Jesus. Music has been a passion that's been on my heart for years. So leaving it has never entered. I don't think that's entered into the equation. And I hope it never does. On the day I feel I have to leave it, then maybe um, I have to find something else to do. <laughs> but I haven't thought about that yet. So I mean, it hasn't really entered my, uh, my mind yet. I think one of the low points was when I had, you know, a lot of people who are married will understand when I had two miscarriages one year after the other and one of them was quite a bit traumatic, you know, you go to the hospital and then you're doing a scan for your pregnancy hoping to see your baby and you see the doctors kind of looking and they tell you, well, um, we can't find a heartbeat and all that sort of thing. They, I mean, it was a very low point, you know, you kind of ask God a lot of questions and, you know, at one point I even said to God, no, I need worship, I pay my tithes, Lord, why? But why am I? Why did I have a miscarriage? I couldn't really read my Bible. I couldn't really pray a lot. But the music, we were just playing. My husband and I were just we were listening to Donnie McClurkin actually. Great is your mercy, and we were just listening. And you know, God was ministering to us because I couldn't really read, sit down and open the Bible and read. I didn't want to read. I didn't want to pray. I was just kind of quietly angry <laughs> with God. So that was a very low point. Eventually, you know, you kind of come out of it and. Said, look, well, look, we've we just got to continue, and I'm gonna. I have to lead worship. I'm leading worship, and, and I was standing there leading worship, and a lot of people did not even know that, you know, I've just gotten this um, bad news. But thank God, you know, God. Uh, the Bible says, "Thanks be to God, who always causes us to triumph in Christ Jesus." Sing it along. He will give you. I was born again in 1986 and my cousins who I was living with, they were born again so I went to church with them, got born again but obviously I must confess 1986 though I did get born again was a bit of a, a year where you were kind of trying one leg in and one leg out. You were kind of trying thinking well I can still do my stuff and just go to church. And that was a year of freedom because I wasn't at home, I was with my cousins, I was not with my parents. So it was like yeah I can do all the things I wanted to do so here we go parties. Let's get a boyfriend, let's go, let's get hooked up and let's do some things, you know. I suppose my turning point even in that year was when you know, somebody asked, said to me, well, my supposed boyfriend said to me that, um, well, um, I know you have British citizenship. Why don't we get married so I can get British citizenship and I'll pay you X amount. And I thought, well, I might not be on the right path, but that doesn't sound right. <laughs> that doesn't sound right. And God said to me, no. So that guy is not in love with you, you know, he wants something from you. I love you unconditionally. I don't need your citizenship. I just want your heart and I want your devotion to me. And so I had to end, tell the person, no, I'm not doing this. 
and I've got to move on. And then I saw so I kind of rededicated on my own. I rededicated my life back to God. So really, the end of that year was 1987. Was kind of kind of the, maybe the beginning of me kind of really understanding the decision of salvation that I had taken. Jesus, you are. Well, I would say God has been just fantastic. And he's been, we, we've seen his favor, we've seen his blessing, and we've seen him intervene in so many different um, situations in our lives. And we're, I'm just grateful. But I, I, every day when I wake up, I, I'm grateful that I belong to this camp, the Jesus camp. It's a great camp to be in. Though the storms are raging high, I do, I do counseling, I, I work with the women's ministry, I, I head the music division within the church, obviously it has to do music, the choreographers within church. I train um, vocalists, I train um, worship leaders, I run um, worship seminars for churches. That takes up my time, mentoring people as well. We run things like the worship masterclass every year. We run Singers Plus. Singers Plus is a class, a vocal class, and we cover basic things, the breathing techniques, you know, improvisation, diction, you know, basic things about singing. And then I run one-on-one -on -one classes for singers, yeah. I try through all the seminars that I run and through all the vocal classes that I run to impart that knowledge and then obviously through the concerts. With the concerts that I do as well, I, I, pray, I try to make sure that obviously people learn from the material that I, that I um, that we produce. You know, you're first of all a Christian before you are a musician. You are a Christian. Your Christianity, your relationship with God comes first. And you've got to feed your relationship with God. You've got to be a lifetime disciple of Jesus Christ. When it comes to music, you know, there are thousands of one mu musicians out there. And there are people who are much better than us. But what we have something in us that is a whole lot more than what they have. We have the Spirit of God. And that is what gives our music the edge. And then, secondly... You've got to be skillful in what you present. So you're, you're supposed to be skilled technically and skilled spiritually. So manage, you've got to be able to merge both of them. So that when you stand anywhere, you're not, you don't give apologies for who you are. You don't apologize for your skill and you don't apologize for being a Christian. You can stand toe to toe next to anybody. I don't feel intimidated by anybody else's skill because I've done my homework. So do your homework. The beginning and the end. Don't trade your relationship with God for anything. God must be first. So trust in God. Trust in God. God will, he will never let you down.